people. So today we got a super fun project for y'all. We are boxing in the fridge. So it's gonna be a two day project. Um, first part in this video, you'll see Jeremiah going ahead and boxing in that fridge. And second part, you'll see me on day two today, painting it. So we just wanna share, we are going to be boxing in our fridge and then extending all of the cabinets in this video. Well, we're gonna be sharing the boxing in part in this video. In our next video, we will be showing you guys how we extended the cabinets. So we're so excited. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And if you're joining us again, we would love if you'd like this video or share it with your friends. All right, so let's get started. These are our kitchen cabinets. What we're wanting to do is extend up here all the way to the ceiling across and then box in that fridge. We're wanting to box this in. As you can see, when you walk in, you see that side of the fridge. So we're wanting to get rid of that and then build it all the way up to the ceiling. First, we'll start by measuring the fridge and the cabinets. All right, hey guys, we are getting started on uh, lifting up our cabinets and elevating them to the sky, <laughs> all the way up to the ceiling, to the moon. Um, and I have my little helper here today. Say hi, hi. Matthew. <laughs> He's gonna be helping me out. Um, but if you can see, see the cabinets here, you'll notice that some of them are a little bit shorter than the others. Um, so when we ordered them, uh, you know, they didn't have the full length in stock. And at the time, we didn't know we were gonna be extending them all the way to the ceiling. Uh, so we hadn't thought about it at that point in time. But now that we have to lift them all the way to the ceiling, what you want when you're doing that is you want things to look uh, even and clean. So what we're gonna have to do, what I'm gonna be doing is actually taking first these shorter ones, elevating them up so that they're level with the taller ones, and then we're gonna build from that point on. The reason being is that we're gonna have an even seam across the top in the middle right there, and we're gonna take a piece of thin molding and put it across there. So if you didn't do that, you would have a seam down here, you'd have a seam up there, you'd have seams all over the place, and then at the end of the day, you wouldn't have something that looked clean and straight across. So that's how we're gonna go about that, and you'll see that as we go through the process. Okay, so right now what I'm gonna be doing is, uh, in order to get everything set up so that we can then extend the cabinets up, the first thing we need to do is box in the fridge. So what we're gonna do is we're going to create panels that go along the side here, a panel that goes along the other side, and then we're actually going to bring the top cabinet forward um, to the front of that box so that it sits kind of flush with the front end of the refrigerator right here. So when I'm doing this, um, I wanted to jump on and, and give some tips because I was having this conversation with Brittany. Um, when I'm doing this, I noticed that this cabinet actually comes a little bit short of the counter here. So when I'm coming up with how wide the box needs to be, I actually at this point in time don't need to take the counter into account. The reason being is that I'm gonna worry about the box first and then if I need to create a gap between here and where the box starts, I can take a strip that's kind of an extender strip that fills in the gap right there to kind of push things out so it still all winds up sitting flush. So that'll make sense as you see the things progress, um, but that's my thought process through this. So we'll get on with uh, boxing in the fridge. When you're boxing in the fridge, you need to leave a little bit of a gap around the outside. Now, I've seen a lot of people box in their fridge, put them on Pinterest, all of those sorts of things, and they create something that looks aesthetically pleasing um, and they create really tight space um, in between their fridge and everything, and it looks great. The problem is, is that if you don't have room for your refrigerator to breathe, you're actually gonna make your refrigerator work overtime, and you're gonna have beautiful cabinets. It's gonna look aesthetically pleasing, but you're gonna have to go and get a new fridge because you're breaking things on your fridge by creating that gap too close. So what you wanna do is actually create at least an inch gap um, between wherever the box starts and the beginning of your refrigerator. That way there's enough space and actually have an inch gap at the back from your refrigerator and the wall. That's gonna help you have 
beautiful looking cabinets, and also a refrigerator that lasts. <laughs> Okay, so um, as you saw me cut that, um, I set up a two by four on here to guide my saw. Um, so you can actually uh, get um, metal guides um, instead of using a two by four at Home Depot or places like that. Um, I didn't pick one up and rather than go back to Home Depot, I just figure I'll use what I already have. <laughs> um, so all it takes is the clamps, the two by four, mounting it on there. And if you saw inside of the video, when I was sawing through this, um, it moved over a little bit on me. So I was just making sure that the edge was sitting flush with the two by four, the edge of the saw when I put it through. So even though this shifted over, my edge of my saw was still along this. So it still got me a clean straight cut. So it helps out. It's a quick fix if you don't have a guide already and it works out pretty well. Yeah. So we've got the pieces of wood cut up um, to create the surrounding outside area of the box that we're going to have on each side. It's going to box in that fridge. Um, now what we're going to have to do is actually um, bring in uh, some pieces on here to uh, increase the gap um, in between this and uh, where the cabinet on top of the fridge is going to sit. So I have to put some blocks of wood on here. For that gap when you're doing that you just want to measure to make sure you know how much space you need inside of that gap um, so i'll do that and then put as many blocks as i need to on top of here just to make up for that space so i just got done putting in the framing piece for uh, the cabinet that's above the fridge so if you take a look you can see here what i did so it was um uh, short enough that i could just use one by twos uh, so I just got one by twos, flipped it over, used the one inch piece for this. And if you'll notice what I did at the bottom right here, put that down here, is I used a one by two, but I used the two inch side to come up so that there's a little bit of a gap. You can see right here, see how it sticks out a little bit? That way, um, what'll happen is the cabinet will kind of rest right there on there. So. Um, it gives it kind of a resting spot. It'll make it easier when putting it in and putting it up just to make sure um, nothing's bottoming out <laughs> or falling down on you. Um, so yeah, I've got that framing done on this side as well as the other side. So we'll start putting the cabinet on and then the backing on and lift this up and get it all inserted and ready to go. So I'm getting ready to start installing and solidifying down upper cabinet to my outside walls that I created. Um, when I do this, I'm going to use this. So this is a countersink drill bit. Get one of these if you're doing this. This is going to make your life a whole lot easier. Um, this is going to save you from splitting the wood in the cabinets or anything like that. Basically what it's going to do is you're going to drill into the cabinet with this part and then this part is going to create um, a little bit of a hole, like a pre-done hole so that when you drill it inside, you're not having to push through the cabinet to get through to the other side. Um, it makes it a whole lot simpler, a whole lot easier, and it makes it um, just a whole lot easier to be able to get everything in place and get even in the spot that you want it. So countersink drill. This one's a cobalt one. I think I got it at, I don't know, either Lowe's or Home Depot, one of those two places, um, but works great. Um, this will also help you. You'll want one of these if you're just simply installing cabinets in your home. Uh, you want to get one of these because that'll help you to link them together. So yeah, thing that you want to do when you're installing that cabinet is also take off the doors. 
this is gonna make your life a whole lot easier too, not having to try and hold the doors open while it's on inside and drill everything in. And then my other tip, this is so that you don't lose your screws <laughs> or anything like that because they're very small screws. You don't want to put them off to the side. They wind up all over the place. Trust me, it's happened to me. Super easy fix. Stick them in a Ziploc bag. Simple, keeps them all together. Set them off to the side. This is a lot bigger than a screw, so a lot less easy to lose. All right, so if you can see, I've got some sawdust after drilling those countersink holes inside of there. So I'm going to show you my tip for getting that out quickly. Leaf blower for the win. All right, now that we got those countersink holes drilled in and we've got a leaf blower to blow out all the dust, <laughs> we're going to move on to drilling everything in and securing it down. Boom. All right, um, it's been a long day trying to get everything going. I'd actually had to run down to the store and get some more screws because when it came to putting this on, I wound up not having long enough screws to screw it into the board. So I had to run down and grab some, um, but I wanna show you what step we're at right now. So as you can see, I've got a lane on the ground. We connected the two sides. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm putting in these boards right here. So this is just to give it a brace on the back end. You'll see another one at the top there, and I'll put one in the middle. Um, and then once we have that, we'll have our box all completed, everything set up, and be ready to bring it inside, and then install it, and then slide the fridge right under it. So we've got everything built. Ta-da! As you can see behind me, we have everything standing up. So we've got the two walls, I've got the bracings in the back. I know I didn't mention it out there, but putting the bracings on, all I did was use a nail gun um, to put those on and solidify those into the back. That way I wasn't using a screw so it wouldn't split the edges of the plywood. Um, so I just put a few nails on each side with a nail gun and it was good to go. Got everything up top. Now all that's left is to slide it over, slide the refrigerator inside, and then put the doors back on, and we'll be done with the box. Okay, so I've got it in place. I got the box in place. One thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to uh, take the baseboard. There's a baseboard at the bottom here, and it's going too far. So it's actually hitting beyond the box. Um, so what we're gonna have to do is uh, cut that, that way it fits flush up against the wall. And then one thing I didn't mention earlier is we don't just set it and forget it, but we push it up against the wall and we're gonna drill it into um, the studs on there. So those panels that we put across as uh, a brace for it, also double as a panel to drill into those studs so it doesn't fall forward or anything like that. Even though it's still really sturdy, I'm not going anywhere, it's just an additional piece. So I got my baseboard piece cut off using this handy little tool. I love this thing. Um, or normally what you would have to do is just take off the baseboard, grab your miter saw, put the line where it's supposed to be cut, cut it, put it all back on. But in this case, I didn't need to do that. Um, instead, all I needed to do was mark off the line where I wanted to cut it, grab this. This just shakes back and forth so it can cut a straight line. And then I just cut in and in and in and in down the straight line until I was able to pick, take that piece off. And that will fit perfectly up against that wall until we finish this. And then we put, you know, finish off the baseboard on the other side and everything as well. So now time to come in, start drilling into here, securing this into place. So we got everything drilled into the studs. It's all secure. This thing is not going anywhere. <laughs> it's set, it's ready to go. Next thing is going to be putting the doors back on. Um, and then after we put the doors on, we're gonna put some trim on the outside and things like that. It's not gonna be completely finished at this point because this is the beginning project to extending everything up to the ceiling, but we wanted to get this done first. Um, so 
show you how everything works. All right, so in about 30 seconds, we got those put on. <laughs> Just, that was about the time of the time lapse. But we got those on fairly quickly. Um, at one part, you noticed that I went away for a little bit and I came back. What happened was uh, one of the um, hinges uh, that connects to the door had bent. And when we were moving things around, stuff like that. So I just went and got some quick pliers, bent it back into place real quick, really easy. Get everything put back together, got it on. No problem at all. So the next thing that we're gonna be doing is gonna be putting on some front facing pieces because the last thing you want is for it to just look like that <laughs> with wood on the side of it or anything like that. So what I've seen a lot of people do um, is they will uh, put it like this. Maybe they'll put uh, like some one by twos on the front and paint them, something like that. I wanted a little bit cleaner of a finish. Um, so I just got some MDF board um, trim that I'm going to put on the front there that's already primed and ready so we can paint it to match and then that'll just sit flush up against there like that and I know first thing you're going to look at is you're going to notice how close it is and I had mentioned wanting to leave a gap we still have that gap inside of there and everything we got some air coming out of the back um, so this is going to close that up a little bit but we will still have a gap it's a little bit hard to see from this far on but we'll pop that on and then eventually we'll get it painted and then when we extend everything up to the top it's going to look absolutely gorgeous hey guys so i'm here and i'm going to get started on painting this beautiful box that jeremiah built so he built a custom box around our fridge that way it had that built-in look because before there was nothing there actually there was a wall here and we tore that down when we bought the house so Anyway, I'm going to get started. I have turned my clothes inside out. That way I don't get paint on any of my clothes. I don't have your typical just paint clothes or like, I don't care if they get messy clothes. All my clothes I wear and I don't care if I wear them in public. So, um, these are all turned inside out in case I get paint on them. So, let's get started. We have a spout on this bucket. Five gallons, just white paint. So, we're going to go ahead and pour it in. This thing is so heavy. So this, um, this still has some sawdust on it, so I'm going to go ahead and wash it all off. This part needs to be nailed in, but you can see it'll look seamless. And there we go. Super excited. Hey, so if you love this video and you wanna see more renovation, mom hacks, homeschooling, all the things that we share on these video series, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you get notified when we post a new video. So we're trying to cram out as many videos as we can as this is a brand new channel and we can't wait to take you along our journey.